guest standing by on the Miller Lite Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline. Uh, she's here to talk about uh, this uh, Equal Pay Act that was recently uh, newly passed here in our state of New Jersey. And what it really is, this is a game changer for all businesses here in New Jersey. It expands the equal pay protections uh, accorded to New Jersey employees under the New Jersey Law Against Discrimination. It's called the NJ LAD. You've probably heard of that. And it is also one of the most aggressive equity pay acts in the country uh, and kind of like uh, go with some things that are going on across the country. Uh, my guest is, Linga, is uh, Linda Jingaleski. Uh, she is from Lindabury, McCormick, Estabrook, and Cooper. Uh, they're based in Westfield, New Jersey, and Elisa is here with us uh, this morning to talk about that. Lisa, good morning. It's Burt Barron. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. This was something, if I recall correctly, uh, back in January when Governor Murphy, he took office. He was sworn in in Trenton there at the War Memorial and went right to work in the same day. And this was one of the things that he said he wanted to sign in and, and kind of get this Equal Pay Act thing uh, kind of going in the right direction. Uh, what are some features about this that all business owners and employees uh, also need to know? Absolutely, absolutely. As as you mentioned, the Equal Pay Act amends the New Jersey law against uh, um, New Jersey LAD to provide additional protection to New Jersey employees. And the language of the act says that it's unlawful for any employer to pay a member of a protected class at a rate of compensation which is less than the rate paid to non-members for performing substantially similar work. So there's a couple of really important features of that language that I want to point out to you. Mm-hmm. The first is that while the act is aimed at eliminating these pay disparities between male and female employees, New Jersey's pay equity amendments actually apply to all protected classes, not just gender. So this opens the door for a multitude of disparate wage claims against employers on the basis of race, age, disability, or any other protected status under the New Jersey Law Against Discrimination. And I believe we have approximately 21 protected classes right now. So that really is a game changer in and of itself. Wow. It seems like we've always had some some pretty good laws uh, on the books, at least based upon just some of the experience that I've seen uh, when it came particularly of dealing with uh, differences in age. You know, everybody throws the age discrimination thing around like it's, uh, you know, grows on trees and whatnot. But this is something that also incorporates some protections uh, for employees based upon the, their ages. This, and this is something relatively new, the way it's uh, incorporated in this new legislation? Absolutely. We're not just looking at gender anymore. We're looking at any protected status. So age is, of course, included, disability, race, any multitude of, of, of um, individuals under protected status class. Gotcha. Uh, does this impact businesses of all sizes in our state? all sizes. Every employer will be impacted regardless of size. And what's also very interesting about this act is that it changes the language from this equal pay for equal work standard that we see under the federal law and that we've previously seen in most states. And it changes it to equal work for substantially, um, excuse me, equal pay for substantially similar work, which is going to require employers to take a really close look beyond an employee's job title and decide uh, and and really look at the work that's being performed. Um, employers are going to have to take into account skill, effort, responsibility. It really places a heavy burden on all employers. And as I said, it opens the door for a multitude of potential wage disparity claims. Yeah, I, I could see how it could because uh, very simply, if uh, someone who is working and feels that they're not being compensated what the other people in the office are making, uh, namely the women against the men, uh, this gives them a, an opportunity. Uh, do, do you confront your boss about it if you're a, a working woman with a full-time job? Uh, do you talk to an attorney like yourself? I mean, uh, what's the first step in making sure that this is actually protecting you in the workplace? Well, you follow the chain of command. If you feel that that's a, if you feel that that's the case, you would reach out to a supervisor, to the human resources department. And what's interesting is, in addition to um, these additional protections that we've mentioned, the Act also expands anti-retaliation protections that exist. So it prohibits employers from taking any retaliatory action against an employee who discusses their compensation or their wages in the workplace. So you basically can't prohibit an employee from talking about his or her salaries with colleagues, with supervisors, with both, and I should say not just with colleagues, but with past and present colleagues. So it really... It really changes the way um, uh, wage compensation is communicated inside the workplace. Interesting. Uh, uh, how about protections? Is there anything for, I guess, what they call in the working world as an outside contractor? Uh, let's say, for example, I have 
uh, two people that work for me. I have Bill and I have Jill, and they uh, they do my social media work, for example. Let's say uh, I want to bring in somebody uh, to help out with the stuff. Do I now have to pay an outside person the same wage, or is that something completely different? Well, you're going to have to take a global, we're, t- we're telling our employees, or excuse me, our clients, to take a global look at what you pay your employees. Okay. And to really basically, you can't just look at job title anymore. You have to look at the work that's being performed. You have to look at um, the number of people that the individuals are supervising and basically do an overall pay audit to determine whether or not those individuals are performing substantially similar work. And unfortunately, under the statute, that phrase, that that very specific phrase is not defined. So mm. it's really placing a heavy burden on employers. I could see how. So, uh, But I just have to, my priority needs to be that Bill and Jill are paid the same amount of money. I, I got to start with that, right? Yeah, I got to start with okay. that. That's a good start. All yes. right. Uh, let's say, for example, Jill says, hey, Bill uh, comes to me and says, Bert, Bill has been making much more money than I have for such a long time. Not only would I like to be paid the same amount as Bill, I want to be made up for all that money for all those years that I work for less. Is that something that plays into this or no? Well, that's an important factor. If you find that someone has been underpaid, you can't reduce. So, for example, you can't reduce Bill's salary under those those uh, circumstances. Okay. You would have to bump up Jill's salary. And if there is a violation, the... That provides mandatory award of treble damages, which is three times the amount of damages. And we're looking, it also expands the statute of limitations to pay equity violations of up to six years. So wow. we're looking at back pay of up to six years. Whoa. Yeah, and that's, that's in addition important. To, it's very important. It's in addition to possible attorney's fees that could be um, included, as well as punitive damage. If, of course, the court determines that the conduct in question is willful. So if you willfully decided not to pay Jill an equal amount, then punitive damage could come into play as well. So there's a lot of legal and financial exposure here, especially for these smaller businesses, these mom-and-pop shops. If there's a violation and trouble damages are imposed or back pay, back pay of six years, they could be out of business. Yeah, yeah, there's no question. Let's say Jill comes to me again and I say, well, you know what, uh, I can't pay you as much. Uh, can I give you an extra week vacation? Can I give you uh, a gas allowance? Can I give you uh, some comp time or something? Uh, can I give you uh, stock options? Uh, is that in play or it must be salaries must be the same no matter what? Well, when you're looking at compensation, you have to look at all components of compensation. So we're no longer just looking at hourly wage or basic salary employers are going to have to take into account all components. So that's going to include bonuses, vacations, and any other benefits. So if you're looking at bumping up Jill's pay by giving her an extra week of vacation, you'd also have to take into account what vacation is being provided to Bill, what additional benefits are being provided to Bill. So it's the whole package. Well, Bill's getting more money. Shouldn't that keep uh, Bill happy while I do something to help Jill out, or it's not that simple? It's not that simple. Okay. No, right. if Bill's getting more money and he's performing this <laughs> uh, substantially similar work to Jill, they both should be paid equal salaries. But again, that's not just the salary or the hourly wage or whatever um, the basic payment is. You have to look into all components of that compensation. This is, and by the way, if you want to use this to explain it to any of your clients, if you want to use the Bill and Jill examples, uh, <laughs> Lisa, go, go, go right <laughs> no, ahead. Please. I'm trying to make it nice and simple as I can. But, uh, I'm going to hold. All right. Uh, feel free to do so. Uh, great information, of course, Lisa. If someone wants to contact you and talk more about this and maybe they feel that they this is something that applies to them, what do they do? How do they reach out to you? Uh, feel free to look on our website, Linda Berry McCormick, Astrobrook and Cooper. That's www.lindaberry.com. You can reach out to me directly, Lisa Jingaleski, or anyone in the Labor and Employment Group would be happy to ask. Excellent. Lisa, I appreciate the time today. Lisa Jingaleski, a great conversation, and uh, you, you made some clarity to something that maybe people don't completely understand. So thank you for the time this morning, and hopefully we could talk soon, all right? My pleasure.